In this video we're going to go through what you need to build a list. There's three things that you need to build a list and they are an autoresponder, a quality free gift to give away and a squeeze page. Now the first thing, an autoresponder, this is without doubt the most important tool of your online business. This is absolutely vital to have because without an autoresponder you obviously can't collect any leads for your business you can't generate any prospects and most importantly you can't generate any buyers any customers into your business either so having an autoresponder is definitely the most important thing that you can that you can do this is uh, the most important tool to have there's two different autoresponder accounts or services that I would recommend. The first one being Aweber. Aweber is who I've been using for about three years now. They're absolutely great. I've got no problems. I've never had any problems with Aweber. Um, the support is really good. If I've ever got any questions, they get back to me really quick. So I've always recommended Aweber. They're a great service. The other service that I would recommend is get response between get response and aweber over the years i've always had great feedback people uh, i've never heard uh, anything bad about aweber or get response so they're both professional services obviously paid services but if you take your online business seriously which i hope you do and that's the reason why you're watching these list building videos then you need a professional autoresponder so you've got a choice between uh, Aweber and GetResponse. If you've already got an autoresponder, maybe you're already using Aweber or GetResponse. That's absolutely great. So all you need now is a is a quality free gift to give away to build your list and a good high converting squeeze page. But we'll get to that in just a moment. So you need a, an autoresponder. I would suggest you either get Aweber or get response if you don't already have an autoresponder that is. If you want to take the free trial on Aweber because Aweber offer a free trial then there is a link below this video where you can access the free trial um, and you can you can go from there. If you want to join uh, get response then obviously head over to get response uh, I don't have a link for those because I'm obviously not with them whatever you do don't ever use a free autoresponder I know some people do use them but believe me it's a big mistake you should never ever use free autoresponders because you won't ever own the leads if you generate any any customers and buyers into your accounts and you've got a free autoresponder you don't own anything at least with these professional services like Aweber and GetResponse then everything that you generate in your email accounts than you own because you you have a paid account and you own everything within those accounts all your customers all your buyers so it's a good business move to obviously spend spend um, a little bit of extra money on a professional autoresponder service like uh, Aweber uh, it's not a lot but obviously it's an investment into your business each month and uh, believe me it's, it's the best investment you'll ever make it's my most important tool if you are thinking about getting one of these two autoresponders, which I suggest you do, um, it might be a little bit easier if you join Aweber, because a lot of the videos that I that I make that I'm going to make for this course, I'm going to be showing you stats and conversions, and a lot of the videos are going to be video tutorials with an Aweber. Uh, but it is completely up to you. It just may make a bit more sense if you if you see me log into my Aweber account and then you can you can log into yours at the same time um, and things will will make a lot more sense. However, it doesn't matter um, if you if you decide to join Get Response. That's absolutely fine. Get Response is a great service. Um, it just might be a little bit easier when you when it comes to these other tutorial videos that I make later on in the course. Okay, so next up is the quality free gift to give away. It's important that you give away something of tremendous value. 
a lot of people these days just give away the same old garbage and that's a free a free report or like a free ebook now a few years ago yes a free ebook might have been able to build you a list um, and it still might be able to build you a list but the way that I try and do things online and the way I try and build my business is I try and go one stage further than, every, than everybody else and try and give people more value than what the last person and what the next person is going to give now I give videos away for my free gift we head over to my squeeze page this is my squeeze page for my video course uh, this is extremecashprofits.com where I currently give away some AdSense and Amazon video showing you how to make money how to make between 150 and 700 dollars per month using all free traffic and people love these videos people are always giving me people are always sending me emails saying that they've they've really enjoyed the videos and they're getting a ton of value from them so it's obviously great to get all that feedback so sending videos to people or having a video course of some description as your free gift is in my opinion one of the best things you can possibly do and it will it will do wonders for your conversion rates as well so if you can create some kind of a a mini video course then do it absolutely because this this will definitely help your conversion rates on your squeeze page if you can't create a video course for your product or perhaps it's not relevant then that's not a problem don't worry about it you can still create some good reports good reports with um, in like a PDF format so don't worry if you if you can't really create a video course because it's not really it's not really suitable for your type of product that you're trying to give away or the type of information that you're trying to give away it's not a problem so don't worry about it all you have to do is when you create your report is just try and go one stage further maybe offer them two or three different reports maybe offer them some mind maps some you know something a little bit different so you're different to the next guy and the previous guy that they they saw so uh, this is I always suggest doing this and this is uh, it's important that you always try and create more value for your for your um, opt-in subscribers so whatever you do just try and offer them the most amount of value as you as you possibly can because this will do wonders for your relationship that you're trying to build between you and your traffic or you and your subscribers obviously the more value that you give them then they're going to want to come back to you when they've got questions and when they want to learn more information on the subject rather than go elsewhere um, and this is obviously what you're trying to do try and, you're trying to make your email list really responsive um, so this is what I would do with your free gift try and create a really good free gift plenty of value and try and go one stage further than everybody else the next thing you need is a squeeze page the squeeze page on this particular template plate is um, I use Optimize Press which is a paid service now they give me membership pages, sales pages launch pages and squeeze pages They're, they basically give me all these different types of templates that I can use generally I only use squeeze pages but I've got lots of other different templates that I can choose from and um, this is the one that I currently use I've got a sidebar with like a video in the middle and I've got bullet points at the bottom there and this particular page converts at around 42 to 50 percent so it, it works really well I'm not going to go into detail about all the conversion rates and, and why it converts we're going to leave that for another video but all I will say is is whatever squeeze page you decide to, to use um, make sure that you split test it and you obviously test different variations different headlines but again we will get into that in another video so I'll show you exactly how to do that if you want to get optimized press and you want to test it out then there will be a link below this video where you can check out optimized press but obviously it is I think it's ninety seven dollars or uh, it's around about that sort of price so um, it's not cheap but obviously um, I'm not a very techie person so optimized press for me saves me hundreds of hours because otherwise I'd be using HTML squeeze pages and all that nonsense and I'm absolutely useless when it comes to building HTML sites and squeeze pages and all that techie stuff so for me this is this has saved me thousands of hours um, and a lot of headaches as well 
but there will be some links below this video where you can get free squeeze pages for WordPress there will be a few different plugins that you can that you can download for free so if you obviously don't want to get optimized press which is completely fine uh, because it's a paid service then there's going to be some free uh, squeeze page templates below that you can use too that is pretty much it for this video so we've covered autoresponders we've covered the best kind of free gift to give away which is as I said videos and we know that we need a squeeze page don't we to build a list and lastly um, we need uh, so we need a free gift and a squeeze page so uh, that's it for the video I will see you in the next one take care in this video we're going to discuss the importance of you having a good sales funnel in place As you can see in front of you, there's a mind map that I've put together so you can see how a basic sales funnel works. Now, what you have to bear in mind is that a sales funnel is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of effort because the whole point of using a sales funnel is so that your business can work on 99% autopilot while you can be doing other tasks such as tweaking and testing your campaigns and driving more traffic to your squeeze page to obviously build your business even bigger so this is the main this is the importance of having a good sales funnel in place now the mind map in front of you is just a basic sales funnel that you can use to build your business I have put together some more advanced sales funnels but we're going to start with this mind map and then we're going to go from there now there's a few things that I'm gonna there's a few tips that I want to give you when it comes to building your sales funnel and these tips are absolutely vital now firstly as I did just briefly mention your sales funnel must work on 99% autopilot now the reason why it must work on 99% autopilot is because you don't want to have to log in to your accounts and to constantly manually do tasks all day long to build your business the whole point of using a sales funnel is so that you can build your business as fast as you possibly can and with the most efficient means possible and by that you use an autoresponder and a squeeze page so everything is taken care of your autoresponder follows up with your prospects and it automatically segments people into buyers lists so you have to remember that when you're driving traffic to your squeeze page as you can see at the top here when you're driving traffic to build your business you're going to be driving traffic from lots of different areas which we will discuss in different videos you're going to be sending traffic from from areas around the internet to your squeeze page and the more traffic that you build the more people will obviously come through to your squeeze page into your funnel so as, as you start to generate a lot of traffic obviously having a sales funnel will be even more important then um, it's important at the start absolutely but as you ge generate more traffic you'll see that having a sales funnel in place is even more vital and you wouldn't be able to handle the amount of numbers and the amount of subscribers um, if you didn't have a good sales funnel in place now let's go through a few more few more tips so the first one as I said was you must your your system your sales funnel must work on 99% autopilot okay this is vital that you understand this there's going to be a few tweaks that you'll have to make you'll have to log in occasionally and make some tweaks to your campaigns and add some follow-up emails obviously change products add lists but the core of your sales funnel must be on 99% autopilot the next thing we're going to discuss is you must segment your buyers from your prospects so as you can see here people opt into your list they come through to Aweber they're now on your prospects list you give them the free gift the free email course or the free video course free ebooks whatever they've signed up to get you then you 
continue to provide value and then you follow up with them in your emails and if that person then buys as you can see at the bottom here I've put buy your product for $27 it could be $7 it could be $5 it could be $97 whatever price point that you place on your product as soon as that person buys you absolutely must segment your list you must then send that person to a download page where they will automatically get placed in your buyers list now the way this works is when that person buys a product you you would have created a separate download page with an opt-in form so what you do after that person has bought your product and they've paid you through PayPal or whatever other means they they pay for the product and then you send them to a download page with an opt-in form on and once that person opts into that new list into the new form then that person will automatically be subscribed to your buyers list and at the same time automatically unsubscribed from your prospects list now the way this is going to work on complete autopilot is by using a feature called automation this automation feature or at least this is what is called in Aweber it's called automation and you can set it up so that as soon as somebody subscribes to one list they will automatically be unsubscribed to an, a different list so in this case you obviously want people to unsubscribe from this from your prospects list as soon as they make a purchase which obviously makes sense you don't want to send people that have bought your product the same the same stuff the same emails so this is why it's vital that you must segment your lists between prospects and the people that buy i.e. your customers the next thing we're going to discuss is you must have some follow-up emails in place when you send people into your funnel now by that I mean you must have a few emails set up so you can follow up with your prospects and your customers don't just think that this means your prospects this means your buyers as well so when somebody enters your list and they come through you want to have at least two or three emails set up so they're going to get some information okay this is very important at the same time don't think that you need to have lots and lots of emails set up like over two months worth of emails because this is this is there's no need for you to have that many emails set up initially because sales funnels get developed over time so from the start then all you need from the start of your as soon as you have, have uh, built the core of your sales funnel as you can see in front of you your squeeze page and your prospects list and you've created your product and you've got a buyers list as long as you've got a few different emails um, three or four will be absolutely fine to start with then that is that's fine that's all you need you can always add extra emails over time and then the same goes for your buyers list when people buy your product and they go to your buyers list you'll have a few follow-up emails in place and again you can always add follow-up emails to your to both lists in time so don't worry about it at the start if you haven't got many emails in place as I've mentioned previously in the videos that I give away for free on one of my other lists I've currently got about 30 days worth of emails but I didn't build that straight away that took me a few months to obviously develop my sales funnel so I had all that content because it obviously takes time to provide all this content within your follow-ups because they are I mean for me they're like big articles full of plenty of juicy content so it does take time so don't worry about it too much if you've only got three or four emails if you've got the time to to gradually increase your follow-up emails maybe like one every few days that's great but initially don't worry about it too much three or four will be fine to start with and the same for your buyers list so this is your basic model of your sales funnel this is a very very basic model however 
you could build your business very very well by using this one sales funnel model alone because you're sending people to your squeeze page they go into your prospects list and you can and you continue to add value over time and then as soon as that person makes a product sorry buys a product you then segment your list and send them to your buyers list so they are then no longer on your prospects list they're actually a customer of yours on your buyers list so in this video we've discussed that your that the importance of having a good sales funnel in place and you now know that it must work on 99% autopilot it does take some time to set up initially that's absolutely fine that's normal but once the core of your sales funnel is in place it should work on 99% autopilot with the exception of you having to go in occasionally and making a few tweaks next you must segment your lists when someone buys we've discussed that and that's very very important don't ever forget that and you must have some follow-ups in place when you initially build your system when you build your sales funnel so you don't need too many emails but two or three on each list on your buyers list and on your prospects list will be absolutely fine and then you can add your follow-up emails to your sales funnel as time goes on and don't try and build everything at once so when you initially build your sales funnel you can always add plenty more content over time so don't worry about having a massive sales funnel in place from the start where you follow up over like two or three months that's there's no need initially keep it small and then you can you can develop your sales funnel as time goes on that's the end of this video i hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one in this video we're going to discuss using one-time offers in your sales funnel as you can see the screen in front of you we've included a one-time offer in this particular sales funnel and it works the same as a standard sales funnel except that you offer people a low price product after they've opted in now there are certain times when you should use one-time offers and there'll be other times when it's purely optional I'm going to take you through a few tips to tell you the sort of times when you should always use one-time offers and other times when it will be purely your choice now the first tip is you must always use one-time offers when you use solo ads solo ads are one of my secret traffic resources that I've been using for a while and they're very very effective at building your list but when you use solo ads you want to try and recoup your investment because obviously it is paid advertisement but it is, it is fairly cheap as long as you get some good ads so with solo ads you always want to be using one-time offers because using one-time offers you will be able to recoup your investment for the ad very quickly as long as you've got a good one-time offer and you've got a good sales process set up the next tip is on your blog when you build your list from your blog which I, I hope you do because it's one of the things that I always recommend is that on your personal blog you have an opt-in form either below your posts or in your sidebar when you build your email list from your blog to include a one-time offer when people opt in from there is purely optional okay this is something that only you and you can decide because everybody has different products everybody provides different information so this is something that you'll have to decide yourself based on your choices and your preferences so if you would rather not sell um, a low price product from your blog because obviously as soon as somebody opts in they're going to see a one-time offer a low price product from maybe around five to eleven dollars so on your personal blog if you would rather not offer anybody anything to buy upon them opting in that's absolutely fine that's purely your choice you can change you can only um, you can go into your Aweber or go into your autoresponder account and change some settings and advertise your opt-in form and set it up so that it doesn't include a one-time offer that's very easy to do and that's absolutely fine 
but as I said when using solo ads it's very important that you use one time offers because it's a very very important and a very uh, profitable way of recouping your solo ad investment the third tip we're going to cover is when you use solo ads they should be very very cheap they should be low priced products you shouldn't be trying to hit people with $27 products upon them opting in because remember it's cold traffic they don't know you there's no relationship there so they're gonna decide to buy your product purely on the price point and how much value that you can give them based on the first time they see your sales page after they've opted in okay so just remember that so your one-time offer product should be low price and I'm talking around five dollars to eleven dollars one of my one-time offers that I currently use converts really well and I sell it for five dollars and it converts really well but I do give away plenty of value in that product so I would highly recommend that you stick to around five to eleven dollars and don't go above that because if you do then your conversions will will get very very low and you may not recoup your investment for your ad of course during during the one-time offer stage this isn't the only opportunity that you're going to have to make money from new subscribers of course you know they're going to go into your list and you could make a lot more money down the line however it's always good to have the mindset of trying to make your initial investment back very early because then if you have made your initial investment back from your solo ads from your one-time offers then everything else that you get from all those new subscribers will be pure profit and obviously this is a winning campaign and this is what we're after and this is what we're trying to achieve so let's just go through this quick sales funnel so somebody opts into your page they see your one-time offer and now they've obviously got two choices they can either buy it or not, or not buy it if they do then they go through into your buyers list on the left here and then you send them their product in the follow-up they obviously go to the download page thank you page they go onto your buyers list and then after they're on your list you again which of which I always say is you continue to add value through your follow-up emails so you've got your email set up here if they don't decide to buy that's absolutely fine it's no problem because you wouldn't have sold anything anyway so you haven't lost anything they come to your prospects list and then when they join your list you provide plenty of value and then over the course of your follow-up email series if they then decide to buy through one of your emails then you of course segment your list as we've mentioned earlier you segment your list and you send that person to your buyers list using the automation feature so everything gets done automatically as I said you want your sales funnel to work 99% on autopilot so this is the sales funnel and sales process of using one-time offers in your business and this can be a very profitable way of making some extra money when using solo ads so this is something that I would highly recommend that you that you use when you use solo ads but again on your personal blog and in other areas it is purely optional based on your personal preferences and choices that's it for this video hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one in this video we're going to discuss the sales funnel that you use when you are selling two different products as you can see this mind map is similar to the basic sales funnel when you only have one product but if you have two products then it makes things a little bit more complex so I'm going to take you through exactly how this will work and two very important tips that I'm going to share with you when using this particular type of sales funnel now the first tip is when you sell your first product the price point should be between seven and fifteen dollars now this is very very important 
very important the reason why you should make your first product very cheap is because at this stage in the sales process and your sales funnel all you're trying to do is find out if that prospect has the ability to pay you're trying to find out if they have the ability to pay this is very important so that's why that your first product that you offer them should be very cheap it's no good you offering them a product of 47 or 97 dollars uh, at this stage in the sales funnel because your conversions will be very low and you don't even know if that particular person has got the ability to pay so it's very important so once you sell your low price product to a prospect he obviously then becomes a customer so then he's transferred over to your buyers list number one and then the same process then starts from the start of your buyers list you continue you obviously send them the the product via email and via download page and then you continue to provide value over all of your follow-up emails and then at some stage you may then offer them another product and if you do you obviously then have have to think about the price point in which your your products going to be now the first one say for example the first product that you sold um, a good start would be between seven to fifteen dollars that would be a good start for your first product so say say if you sold your first product for ten dollars to one of your customers or to a prospect which then becomes a customer so he he then gets transferred onto your buyers list and you and you sold a product for for ten dollars your next product that you sell wants to be in the range of 17 to 27 dollars it all basically depends on how much you charge for the first product so if you only charge seven dollars for the first product then i would recommend that for your second product you charge between 17 and 27 dollars if you charge maybe between 10 and 15 dollars for your first product then your second product wants to be between I would say around twenty twenty five dollars or tw twenty two dollars to about thirty seven dollars so again this is something that that only you can decide it depends how much value that you provide in your courses in your products so it really depends on on uh, it's all up to you on basically how much that you set your prices at so a good start though I would recommend is around seven to eleven dollars or seven to fifteen dollars but a good price point which I often start at it is seven dollars because at seven dollars you you find out if your prospect has the ability to pay which is very important so after they've purchased your low price product as I said earlier they then get transferred to your buyers list and then they go through your emails and then if they buy your second product which is maybe at twenty seven dollars they then get transferred to buyers list number two so all of your buyers list all of your customers in your buyers list number two you know have purchased your your first product and your second product so your buyers list number two are going to be your most valuable customers and this can of course continue you can have a buyers list number three four five and six so you can continue to offer them different different products in different price ranges so of course you don't want to offer somebody a three hundred dollar course as soon as they enter your list you want to obviously work up um, in different increment levels so your buyers list number three you could offer them a seventy seven dollar course but obviously the more you charge for your courses obviously the more value that you have to provide um, not that you have to provide but you know you should want to provide more value obviously if you if you charge more for your products so that's the end of this video this is this is the sales funnel that you should use when you have two products to sell um, just a, a quick recap as we've said 
first product don't go over the fifteen dollar mark and a good price point is around seven dollars but seven to fifteen dollars is good and then when they go onto your buyers list uh, number one you can then offer them another product obviously going a little bit higher so if you give them a ten dollar course if they buy a ten dollar course you could then offer them a twenty two dollar um, course in your next product in your next when they go onto your buyers list you, you can then offer them a uh, more expensive product around twenty two dollars but as I said it all depends on how much you charge for your first product and that then depends on how much you charge for your next product and the next one after that I hope you've enjoyed the video I will see you in the next one in this video we're going to discuss the advanced sales funnel with a one-time offer and two products as you can see the mind map in front of you seems a lot more complex than any of the other mind maps that I've shown you so far this particular sales funnel has a one-time offer has two products that you sell and it also has an upsell and I'm going to walk you through exactly how this entire sales funnel and sales process works it's really simple so don't look at this and think it looks really complex and you'll never be able to use it in your own business because believe me you will and it's very simple to implement so firstly I'll walk you through the entire process and then I've got two tips that I want to give you that are vital when using this particular sales funnel so as you can see at the top here we've got our squeeze page as normal so people come into your squeeze page and you present them with the one-time offer which as I've told you before you want to make it between five dollars and eleven dollars for maximum conversions obviously anything more than eleven then your conversions are going to start getting really really low and then you give them the opportunity to buy your one-time offer if they do buy that's fantastic they go through and they go through to your thank you page which is now an upsell so what you do when they when they buy the product when they pay for the product through PayPal you then redirect them from PayPal to which would usually be the download page where they download this particular product that they've just purchased but you don't in this particular sales funnel it's a lot more effective and a lot a lot more profitable what you do is send them to another offer which is a $17 upsell so the thank you page is now another offer page and this is how you can make your campaigns especially when you use solo ads a lot more profitable this is a fantastic way to increase your profits and this really does work so your your thank you page is now your $17 or I mean it could be a $10 it could be a $27 remember what I said all depends on how much you charge at the start but because we're charging like five dollars in our one-time offer seventeen dollars seems like a good amount to charge for our upsell so then you give them the opportunity to buy your upsell product which is obviously a, a related product to the first one if they buy that that's fantastic they then go through and you then put them on your buyers list number two because they've just purchased both products and they are a very valuable customer if they don't buy the $17 upsell which some won't then you just put them on buyers list number one because they've obviously still purchased your product which was your one-time offer so then you put them on your buyers list, buyers list number one of course if they don't even buy your one-time offer then you put them on your prospects list which is exactly what you would do anyway and you just follow up with them until they decide to make a purchase and at some stage as long as you provide plenty of value and you build a good relationship and you build some plenty of trust and credibility then and you offer them some good low price products with plenty of value then some people are going to purchase and when they do they obviously go to your buyers list um, and as you can see on the left here at the far left you can even give them a second upsell 
on the thank you page from your seventeen dollar product but again this is this is getting into really really advanced stuff but I will touch this at the end of the video but I'm going to take you through a couple of tips right now which you must remember to, to implement when using this particular sales funnel and the first tip is on your one-time offer page you mustn't offer them the same product within your emails at the same price okay so say if you offer them a five dollar product on your one-time offer page and in your follow-up sequence emails you're trying to sell this same product which is completely fine if you do if you are trying to sell them the same product which you showed them at the one-time offer stage you must make it more expensive because otherwise you're going to lose all your credibility so on the one-time offer page say if you offer them your course for five dollars within your emails you must make it more than five dollars you must make it seven ten or eleven obviously not too much more because it's going to start to cause a lot of problems but make it more expensive than what it would have been on the one-time offer stage so if that was five dollars then make it seven or ten dollars that'll be fine now the next thing you have to bear in mind when using this particular sales funnel is when you use upsells and the visitor decides not to buy anything you must provide them with a link where they can download the previous product that they just bought because otherwise they're going to get really upset you're going to get a lot of emails and your system isn't going to work very smoothly because because remember what I said quite a few videos ago and I always I always say this you want your sales funnel to work on 99% autopilot you don't want to have to keep coming in and sending people products because this defeats the whole object of having an online business and using a sales funnel okay you want to make it as efficient as possible obviously you're going to have to make some tweaks and come in and up change some things now and again that's that's fine but you obviously don't want to come in and have to send people products all the time you want your system to do that for you so when you send people to the $17 upsell page so remember someone's bought your one-time offer and when they're about to download it PayPal sends them to a different offer page rather than the download page and on this offer page you give them the opportunity to buy another product for $17 if they don't then at the bottom of that page you need to include a link to say no thanks I'm not interested please take me to my down please take me to my product which they've just purchased which would be the one time offer okay so you need to definitely include that link at the bottom of the page when you include this $17 upsell page offer page so I hope that makes sense obviously you can always go over this video as many times as you wish until it all makes complete sense but believe me this particular sales funnel isn't that complex uh, it may look quite complex to start with but after you've included a, a few different products within your sales funnel and you've got a lot more follow-up emails in place then you'll be surprised at how fast and how big that your own particular sales funnel will grow so those are the two tips that are vital that you must use when using this particular type of sales funnel you mustn't include the course at the same price within your first lot of emails as the one time offer it must be more expensive and secondly remember to always include a no thanks link on any upsell page basically I mean I use this one for example because we only use one in this particular example of this process um, and lastly before we end the video I want to quickly discuss this option here as I said you have another option to include another upsell on the thank you page and by all means you can implement this this technique it works really well because remember what I said to you is your one-time offer page here is to get people to find out if they have the ability to pay and not only that is to recoup your investment and once they get to the 
offer page if they buy that you obviously know they're they're a very hot buyer and um that they're they're, uh, they're going to be in your in your buyers list number two but before you put them in your buyers list number two you have the option obviously they're going to go to paypal again and buy this product you then have the option of sending them to another offer page for say forty seven dollars now again this is purely optional one upsell is usually is usually fine but two upsells if you'd like to implement any more upsells in your sales funnel again this is for you to decide only and this is purely optional and this is this is something that you have to decide yourself but you could include another upsell but remember what I said always include a no thanks link at the bottom of the page so they can download their previous products so you don't upset anybody or you don't start getting emails again you want your system to work 99% on autopilot so this is another option for you to consider when you build your sales funnels out so I hope this video has made sense on on what your end process should look like your end sales funnel this is pretty much how your sales funnel should look you should you should have a one-time offer I mean definitely when you use solo ads you should have a one-time offer obviously a prospects list a buyers list a buyers list number two and have some upsells in there as well because having upsells definitely increase your profits especially when you use solo ads but uh, in general you can use you can use upsell pages as well they work they work really well but again it's purely your choice once you get to a, a stage where your sales funnel begins to really grow and get a lot bigger you can obviously then make your own decisions as, as to how many upsells and downsells and where you want all your visitors and traffic to go when they go through your funnel so this is so your sales funnel pretty much gets developed over time it's not something that I can directly tell you the best type of sales funnel for your own business is something that you have to uh, develop yourself but there are basic sales funnels that you can use to start with which which you must use otherwise your business won't grow at all and uh, so far in the videos that I've shown you these are all sales funnels that you can use in your own business um, to start to start growing your business and to start building your email list effectively that's it for this video hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one in this video I'm going to show you how to create high converting squeeze pages the first thing we're going to discuss is the headline of your squeeze page the headline of your squeeze page is the most important part of your entire squeeze page because this is the first thing that people see when they come to your page so you've got to make sure that you've got a good headline with a good call to action and it makes people want to read more and it makes people want to stay on your page for longer to find out more the first tip is going to be use power words in your headline power words I mean words like reveal free basically words that really pull people in and it and it creates attention I've also used the words uh, cash sucking because cash sucking is a lot a lot better than using the word making I mean I could have put um, how to make money with AdSense and Amazon affiliate sites but that doesn't sound very good does it so I, I chose the words cash suckings because um, it basically improves conversions and it holds people to the page more and and this is exactly what you what you're trying to accomplish with a squeeze page so I use a lot of these different power words in my headline now what I've done is I've included a big list of power words below this video so you can copy and paste them into a notepad of your own and you can use all those power words when you want to make your own headlines for your own squeeze pages because the, and they're going to help you a lot so that will be a big list below this video so, so grab them when the video is over so the first tip is to use 
power words in your headlines this is Im imperative that you do this because without power words your headline won't look very exciting and it's not going to pull people in and people aren't going to want to stay it's just it's just a fact okay headlines need to pull people in um, otherwise your conversions are going to plummet and and if you haven't got good conversions then the ins this entire list building system that I'm going to teach you um, isn't going to work if your conversions are really low um, I mean it will actually work but you're going to need a lot more traffic to get subscribers and obviously that's you know the key is to try and get as many subscribers with the smallest amount of traffic so uh, so make sure you include power words in your headline the next thing we're going to discuss the next tip is include videos in your squeeze pages because they generally increase conversions like I say generally sometimes there will be a few exceptions when you may include a video and it might actually lower your conversion however most of the time videos will increase your conversions whether it be uh, a screenshot kind of a a screen capture like what I do in this video or you could actually show yourself on on video so any type of video generally increases your conversions because people love to watch videos but that's not to say that if you always use a video you're always going to get a better conversion rate than if you if you just use text but this is where your split testing comes in obviously you, you need to split test a capture page sorry uh, or a squeeze page that you create with a text with a text headline and a, a completely um, a squeeze page which is made up of mostly text and split test that against a squeeze page which has a, vid a video on it and then you can then test to see which squeeze page converts the best tip number three you want to try and use numbers in the headline as you can see I've used uh, I've used 150 to 700 dollars per month numbers always hold people's attention more they create more attention so again numbers in the headline are a big one I always try and use numbers in my headlines they they work really really well next thing is the bullet points bullet points are really important even though they're below the fold people do still scroll down now the key to bullet points is they must pull people in okay I haven't just wrote a few sentences here and left it at that I've carefully worded these bullet points so it makes people want to opt in to watch my videos so for instance um, the first bullet point seven things every site you build must have without just one of these you are doomed for failure from the start this is I mean a lot all these bullet points are completely true if you watch my course then these are completely accurate because um, I do show you like tip like seven different things that you must have and these are all completely true so obviously don't don't tell any any uh, any lies and stuff on your squeeze page make sure everything's accurate and, and the truth but just make it sound more more exciting than rather than just having a boring one line of, of text which doesn't sound very good at, at all I, mean, I could have put on here seven things seven things to have on your site to make more money you know I could have put that but that doesn't sound very interesting does it so in, instead I've put seven things every site you build must have I've capitalized that without just one of these you are doomed for failure from the start so it's making people think well um, these seven things I must have on my site have I got them on mine and it starts to make people think you know have they got these seven things on their site um, what if they are just doing one of these things that I've mentioned they could that's probably why they're not making any money and it starts to it starts to make people think um, again the next one um, let's go down to this one three must know tips how I literally force Google to give me high rankings um, there's three things that I do on my sites which basically help me to really increase my rankings um, I could have put on there three three things to help me get ranked faster or something like that but again it doesn't sound very good three must know tips how I literally force Google to give me high rankings again these are all completely relevant and completely accurate but you just word them different to make your squeeze page convert better so I think you 
I think you get the idea of that. The next tip is your opt-in box above the fold. This opt-in box here, generally they convert better if they're above the fold because you don't want people to have to scroll down to opt-in. There are some squeeze pages I know that they have like a, a headline then a picture and then you can scroll down um, a few like old school squeeze pages that I used to use. They can work okay in certain markets and different different niches but generally I've found if your opt-in box is above the fold it converts a lot better than it, than if it was below the fold and when I say below the fold I mean down here somewhere so because people are lazy people will come to your page and they want to see what's going on they want to read your headline they want to see what you're off offering them what's in it for them and they want to opt in sometimes without even scrolling down and some people are lazy that's just the way pe people are so having the opt-in form up here on the right hand side above the fold will definitely increase your conversions the next tip only make the video short when you make a video for your squeeze page if you do include a video this is don't make it very long as you can see look mine's two minutes six seconds don't make the video very long you don't want a 15 minute video on your squeeze page okay people don't want to come to your squeeze page and be sat there for for 10 or 15 minutes watching a video watching you harp on about a lot of stuff okay make it short make it snappy to the point show people what what you can do for them and how you can help them in this video of two minutes I've basically shown people some of my income screenshots of my AdSense earnings for my affiliate sites just basically said this is how much you can potentially earn and uh, you know I'm no big guru I've just basically used my system and I've and I've made quite a few different sites and and these are the type of results that the average person can get um, and that's all I've done and again that's helped my conversions the next tip is include the word free a lot in your squeeze page I briefly mentioned this earlier but I've mentioned it there I've mentioned it there and underneath there so that's three times again there, that's four times um, again there, that's five times so as you can see the word free is really important on your squeeze page because you are given information away for free and you want to try and clarify that by having the word free in your page a lot obviously don't make it unnatural don't don't literally put the, the word you know free 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 all along here there's, there's, there's no need just fit it into your to your squeeze page naturally but try to obviously include it at least three to four times uh, at least so uh, this will definitely include your improve your conversions because obviously people like anything that's free the next thing is uh, professional looking pages will improve your conversions generally I get you know again I say generally because there's going to be a few exceptions you may have all these fancy pages and then you might do a split test use a basic page and the, and the basic page might outperform the really good flashy page that you've got in some cases yes that does happen but generally most of the time the types of pages that convert better are ones like this as you see in front of you this is from optimized press and it's got good it's got a good call to action on the side here it's got a professionally looking design template so everything's clean uh, and it's even got a Facebook icon there so people can share this page so um, generally if you've got a professional looking page then it will convert a lot better than a, a general HTML ugly looking kind of a page but that's not to say that you shouldn't ever use any test any of these other pages because you should because you never know you may find a template that is quite boring and quite dull and it might actually work better for you for your particular product or for your particular gift that you're giving away for free so the most important thing is is to remember that you obviously must split test which we will get to that in a different video but to try and use generally templates that that look that look quite good that that look uh, professional and look trustworthy they're pretty much all the tips for the squeeze page this is how I can convert 42 to 50 percent of my 
of the traffic that come to this page because of everything that I've just given you. So all of those tips that I've just given you, um, I've included in this squeeze page. So I'm going to quickly run through these um, very quickly, and then that will be the end of the video. So tip one is use power words in your headline. Okay, so make sure you've got plenty of power words. There'll be a list below this video of power words so you can use them for your squeeze pages too. Tip two, in your videos, sorry, um, videos generally increase conversions. So whenever you create your squeeze pages, if you can, try and create a video of some description. Sometimes you can't or sometimes you won't want to use a video, that's absolutely fine. But if you can, try and use a video and at least split test it to see what difference it will make as videos do generally increase conversions. Tip three, use numbers in your headline. As you can see, I've used the numbers here to to show the type of results that you can get for each affiliate site that you build. So numbers is a massive one. Okay, always include numbers in your headline if you can. That is, if it's relevant. The next tip is bullet points must pull people in. So make sure that your bullet points pull people in and and your bullet points sound interesting rather than just one boring sentence. Okay. So that's a, a great a great way to improve your conversions as well. Only make your video short. If you do make a video, try and make it less than a few minutes long. As I said, you don't want to bore people by by having a video that's like ten or fifteen minutes long. There's no need. A squeeze page should be short and snappy just to get people to opt in and that's that's all you need people to do. You don't want people to be sat there watching a video of you harping on for for ages. Uh, the next tip is your opt-in box should be above the fold for the best conversions. Again, on the side here as you can see, people don't have to scroll down to get my video course. They basically opt in as soon as they come to the page. Next tip is include the word free in the page as much as you can. Okay as long as it sounds natural that is so include the word free three or four times if not more in your page and that will definitely help to improve your conversions also the last one professional looking pages generally convert better than than ugly looking templates this is true in most cases but as I said split test the pages that you use so you can be so you can find out which pages work for you for your particular offer because remember not everyone's offer is going to be the same um, this page might convert really well for me but it might not convert well for you so just this is where you need to split test your different pages your different squeeze pages that you use and different headlines but we will get into that as I've said so that's the end of this video about how to create high converting squeeze pages I hope you've enjoyed it and remember to use all the power words at the bottom of the page and also you can go over this video if you've missed anything In this video, we're going to discuss the best way for you to build your list with all free traffic. As you can see, the mind map in front of you, we've got our personal blog at the top there with all of our traffic methods set up, driving traffic to our blog, and then we will, of course, send all of the traffic from our blog to our squeeze page and to our email list. And this particular tactic that you see in front of you, this is the most powerful way to build your email list. And this is the most powerful way to build your business. Because the way your blog is going to work is it's going to act as a pre-selling tool and it's going to build trust and credibility for you so that when your traffic, when your visitors subscribe to your list, they will already be much more qualified and targeted rather than sending cold traffic from from these traffic methods directly to your email list sorry uh, directly to your squeeze page let's just run through some of these traffic methods and then I'm going to give you three very important tips at the end which are vital when you're using this particular method and this particular process when building your email list and the first one social media 
it's obviously very important so you can create Facebook pages and funnel traffic to your blog from your pages <coughs> create articles ease on articles are a good directory there's lots of other article directories out there so spread yourself around and and get your articles out there driving traffic to your personal blog SEO so this is going to be from Google Bing and Yahoo but obviously don't spend too much time trying to generate traffic from search engines because if your rankings do ever drop then obviously you're going to lose a lot of traffic if you get most of your traffic from search engines so spread yourself around and use all these different methods for, for getting traffic your email list you can drive traffic from your email list to your blog posts so if you've got any good blog posts that you think your email list will like then send them to your blog and although they will have, of course already be on your list so they're not going to actually be able to sign up they will still help you to build your list because they will give you exposure to, to your posts if you've got any social media icons which you should have like Facebook stumble upon digs uh, Google plus ones then the more exposure you get to your blog posts then this is going to help you to build your list even bigger by getting more traffic to your blog posts and your blog so your own email list the bigger it gets will will just help you even more to build your business videos so you can use YouTube to upload some videos and drive traffic back from YouTube to your to your blog that's a great way of getting plenty of traffic free reports this one is a is a good little way of getting plenty of more traffic so if you release any free reports out there to your subscribers obviously tell everybody that they can they can pass it on to whoever they want you will get um, viral traffic um, from, from lots of areas obviously it's all coming from your report but if people give your your report away for free to their friends then you can get some you can get a lot of traffic as long as you leave your your links within your report back to your blog then you will generate plenty more traffic social bookmarking this is going to be from places like dig stumble upon so this will give you some good traffic you know as long as you write good quality articles on your on your blog then uh, this will all help for you to get exposure and, and of course build you some social bookmarking links which are all always going to be helpful viral word of mouth traffic is very important because the more quality information you provide in your blog and in your email lists and in your free gifts then people will have people may tell their friends about a blog so then you may get more traffic that way and you'll be able to build your business even bigger so and, and viral traffic so this is going back to your free reports if you release any reports or any good articles then that might get your article may get syndicated around the internet giving you plenty more viral traffic so that's another great way referring blogs so this is basically blog comments when you comment on people's blogs and you leave a link back to your blog this is a fantastic way to build links plenty of good link juice and to get plenty of good traffic so try and be try and take part in um, in in discussions and other other blogs obviously in the internet marketing niche um, and and you'll be surprised how much extra traffic that you'll generate other search engines so this is pretty much Bing and Yahoo um, ask.com as well all the small search engines but they all help so in time you will start to generate more traffic from those search engines and forums as well forums is one of the best ways to generate some high qualified traffic because obviously if, if somebody's part of a forum then they're obviously passionate about that particular interest um, so this is a great way to build your list you can generate some very highly qualified visitors and traffic from forums so as long as you've got a link in your forum signature or your forum profile coming back to your blog then then this will definitely be effective so these are all the traffic generation methods to use these are basically all the main ones that you should be using now among all these you will be able to drive a lot of traffic more than you will ever need so you've got enough traffic sources here to last you a very long time and I mean you could you could build your business with just one or two of these maybe SEO and social media and videos 
um, but if you use all of these and, and spread your links out among all of these different methods and, and generate traffic from all of these methods then you're going to do very well now I'm now going to get into three three quick tips that I'm just going to I'm just going to share with you when using this particular method and um, the first one is this particular model that you see in front of you again I will say it's very very powerful this is the best way to build your email list so and this particular methods I, I call my business building vehicle your business building vehicle and this is a very powerful way of building your list so that don't, don't ever forget that this is the best way to build your email list so this is where you want to be spending most of your time of, of creating content and links so if you do that then your email list will grow a lot faster the second thing is do not send traffic anywhere else apart from your blog you can of course send traffic direct to your squeeze page that's absolutely fine but when it comes to free traffic methods you are best to send traffic to your blog because um, you're going to get a lot more benefit from from sending people to your blog because people will be able to see who you are and they'll be able to interact on your blog and when you build your email list from your blog your traffic and your visitors and subscribers will be a lot more qualified and this is what we're going to get on to next the tip number three is use use your blog as a pre-selling tool this is this is how I use my blog and this is the best way to build your email list and to build your business use your blog as a pre-selling tool so that when people enter your list from your blog as I just said they'll be a lot more qualified and by the time they enter your list they will most most people would have already read your about me page so you will uh, already have some trust and some credibility there so all of your subscribers or most of your subscribers will be a lot more qualified if they come from your personal blog so this particular mind map is the way, the exact way that you need to be driving traffic to your squeeze page don't be sending traffic anywhere else apart from your personal blog now I'm talking about sales pages and I'm talking about affiliate offers don't be making videos and sending people to affiliate offers okay or any sales pages because it's completely pointless you're gonna waste all of that time and all of that effort making the video or or writing that article just to send people to a sales page that may convert a two percent or one percent so one person out of a hundred will will buy you're you're better off sending those that hundred people to your personal blog and then you may get 15 20 25 people opt into your list if not more um, and those 20 to 25 people may then convert into buyers at some point may then convert into customers rather than you buying sending one person or sending 100 people to a sales page and making one or two sales it's a lot better to send people to your personal blog build a bit of trust credibility and they can see who you are see that you're a real person and you will build your email list a lot faster and you will generate a lot more income by using this particular model so I hope you have I hope you now understand this is this is the secret behind building your business and your email list from from your personal blog this is exactly how to do it so if you haven't got a personal blog set one up and start using these methods and over a period of time you can slowly generate more traffic and this will help you to build your email list and don't forget this is all free traffic so all you will need to do is just put in some time to create some videos reports and social bookmarking and and get in those forums and leave some comments on blogs and you will start to generate plenty of free traffic and your email list will build a lot faster i hope you've enjoyed the video i will see you in the next one in this video i'm going to show you how to use your autoresponder to set up a brand new campaign and also I'll be giving you lots of tips as well. 
the first thing we need to do is come to our autoresponder to set up a brand new list now this is going to be showing you exactly how to set up a new list for your free gift and for your product so this is going to show you how to set up a basic list so that you can start building your own email list from your blog and from solo ads as I've shown you if you've already got a list set up then it's still worth watching this video because I'm going to show you how I set up all my campaigns so you may be able to take a few extra tips and find out exactly how I set up my campaigns so it's definitely worth watching even if you've already set your campaigns up for your products so let's go to create and manage lists create a new list so what we're going to do is just name this obviously something relevant to your product so for this example let's just put your product your your product one and what I usually do most of the time I include numbers in the list name so then you can you can separate the prospects from the buyers so you can so usually number one most of the time this is obviously if it's available then number one will usually be the prospects and number two will be the buyers and then three will be um, maybe the upsell four will be another another product obviously a buyers list but usually the um, if it's got no number at all or if it's got a number one then I usually keep those for prospects this is how I organize my list and and it's quite a simple way it's quite an easy way to do it so we're going to do save this as your product number one and what you do is and a nice little tip as well what I tend to do is put little brackets here and then put your product there so when they get an email from you they can see what the email is about although your name will be there if you've subscribed to a, a list to do with AdSense then uh, it could be called uh, AdSense list or making money with AdSense or something like that so this is a good little tip that I include in my campaigns as well if you are subscribed to my extreme cash profits you'll see that I've got extreme cash profits in there so people know at a glance that that is what the email is about so that's what I usually do your product obviously your email address from notifications is when every time you get a brand new subscriber you get an email and I usually put new subscriber in there and, and my email okay so save settings so we've done that You'll put, you can put a description in there as well it's an, entirely up to you um, I'm not going to spend too long on this personalize your list I don't usually bother with any of that you want to try and keep things fairly simple if you want to include Facebook and, and Twitter and all these extra icons and social media widgets then by all means do that but I don't I like to keep things nice and simple confirmed opt-in I usually turn this off the reason why you must turn this off is because if you don't turn it off then you're not going to be able to use a one-time offer save this confirmation success um, you can leave that it doesn't doesn't make too much difference if you leave that blank right so we've we've done this confirmed option so what we do now we've created our new list which is your product number one And what we need to do as well, remember, is create a buyers list. Create a new list because I'm going to set this one up, this buyers list up, just an example. And I'm going to show you the automation feature, your product 
two. There you go, that's available, which is great. So again, you'd obviously fill this in, but you could put something a little bit different. Obviously, don't put buyers list in here because this is what your customers will actually see every time you get an email from them. So it's up to you if you want to put something else in there. I do, as I said a few moments ago, I was I always put something in there so people know it's for me and then notifications your name and email so same procedure as the prospects list however when you come to confirmed opt-in you want to leave that on because personalize your list don't worry about that confirmed opt-in I leave this on okay you must leave this on um, it doesn't obviously you're not going to be using one-time offers in any of that because this is where people will be coming to download your product so they have to confirm in order to get your emails and their actual product that they purchased so save settings so what you do now is you go to the automation feature because what you want to happen is whenever somebody subscribes to your product number two you want them to unsubscribe from your product number one if you remember what I showed you in one of the earlier videos it's important to do this because you want to obviously separate your buyers from your prospects from the people that want free information to the people that become part of your customer base so what we do we go in to automation So what we do to number two what we do we'll go to your product number one and then unsubscribe from your list product number one when lead subscribes to product number two now this is this is the secret to automatically remember what I said your sales funnel needs to work on 99% autopilot so this is what you do save automation rule so as soon as as soon as somebody downloads your product or opts into your download page to get your product they will automatically get unsubscribed from your prospects list and they will be on your buyers list this is very important okay so that's that's vital that you do this step now if we go to web forms if you can see now that we're on your product number one so this is going to be your prospects list we obviously need to create a web form now I'm not going to create anything fancy I'm just going to do this quickly very quickly for an example so we come in here and what I do as well this is an, another little tip I always put first name only this is what I usually do because I don't like when people put their first and second name in it confuses things this is basically how I do it so if you want to copy exactly how I set my campaign up then by all means you can first name only save and then I get rid of this thing at the bottom here because this is just a waste of space um, and sometimes I get rid of that as well and save web form so first name and email is all you really need remember this is this is the web form that you're building now so that you can put on your squeeze page so what we do settings name this this is going to be your main web form so I just usually put your product squeeze and that's usually good enough and then thank you page again this is very important because you need this is probably the most important step this is when you need to include your one-time offer so your one-time offer your one your one-time offer there 
that has to be in there because as soon as somebody subscribes to your list you will automatically redirect them to your one time offer and this is how your sales funnel is going to function so you want to save your web form so everything's done it doesn't appear to be valid okay so let's just put let's put google.com in there but this is obviously going to be your one time offer okay so now that's done just save that again I'm not sure if that's saved yep and then go to publish and then you get your HTML I will install my form raw HTML and then you've got your web form and that's done so that you then put this into your web page in my case I would go over to my extreme cash profits and obviously put that in this template here and the next step that we need to think about is tracking now remember one of the other videos that I showed you in web forms whenever we set up a new campaign a new solo ad campaign we name our new opt-in box don't we the name of the solo ad now this is your main squeeze page so this is obviously what you're going to direct traffic to but every time you set up a new campaign like for solo ads and this also applies to different areas on your blog again this is another vital tip so say if you've got a blog and you have a sidebar and you've got an you've got an, op, uh, an opt-in box in your sidebar you can set up a brand new tracking link so you can track opt-ins just from your sidebar obviously it's all going to go to the same uh, to the same list because this web form will create opt-in forms based on based on your based on this list here so it won't create any problems all of your traffic will still go down the same funnel but you'll just have different opt-in forms so you can track and so you can uh, identify the most profitable areas where your subscribers come from and then in a few days or weeks time or even months you can see whenever someone makes a purchase you can see which opt-in box that person come from or which area around the internet they come from if you've set different tracking links up different opt-in boxes um, but as I said I would generally only ever use your blog to funnel traffic to your squeeze page you can if you use any external traffic method you can send traffic like directly from videos to your squeeze page you, uh, you can do that that's fine but I would recommend that you generate all your traffic to your blog because as I said it's your blog will act as a pre-selling tool and then you can generate traffic or funnel traffic from your blog to your squeeze page that way and you'll find that your traffic and your subscribers will be a lot more targeted and a lot more pre-qualified so in here you can set up different tracking opt-in forms for your blog so that's very important as well if we go to your product number two remember this list here product number one is your prospects list this is where all of your prospects will come through and they will get your free gift now let's go to our buyers list which will be your product number two and what we do create a new web form remember when we set this up the confirmed opt-in was on wasn't it that's important so we've got our opt-in here again we can change first name we can change this first name only you can do that if you like and save and then take this off off here take that off there save web form now this particular link here sorry not link um, opt-in box in front of you this is going to be settings this is going to be your download page so I usually put download page in there 
thank you page I usually put the smart video version because that's fairly cool <coughs> excuse me download page and then save web form I mean you can put product download page or whatever but I'll just leave it like that for now and then we go to publish and then again I will install my form raw HTML and then you you include this into your squeeze page template so whatever squeeze page template you use you obviously just need to include this within your squeeze page so you can generate your opt-in form now this code here is for our download page remember so as soon as somebody makes a purchase they will um, after they they've paid with PayPal they will be redirected to a download page now I'm going to show you an example of what I use for my download page this is a very basic page but remember this type of page doesn't have to be anything fancy and special because all you're doing at this point is giving people their actual product that they paid for so it doesn't have to be anything special all you need is a basic opt-in box and a little bit of text up here just to say thank you for purchasing the course or your their product enter your name and email in the box below and then they will do that so this is when having a confirmed opt-in is important because obviously you want all your buyers and all your customers to confirm their email so they they don't get put um, so all your emails don't go to their junk folders it's obviously important and this is this is how you need to do it this is a very simple download page but it works and you don't need to make make it any more difficult than what it is this is all you need is just a basic page so for me I generate my traffic to this page they obviously go through if they make a purchase then they obviously come to my download page here and then they they enter the name and email and then I will immediately send them all of my videos for free not for free this is my product sorry so this is how you can set up your campaign and your products to do the exact same thing so you set up your prospects list as we mentioned and then you set up your buyers list use the automation rule so as soon as they subscribe to product number two which is your buyers list they will automatically unsubscribe from your prospects list that's very important you must segment your lists so if we just quickly run through exactly what we've talked about in this video we've set up a brand new campaign in your autoresponder we've set up the automation feature which I've just mentioned is very important you can include your first name only in the opt-in box that's a, a little tip that I use confirmed opt-in is only for your buyers lists for your prospects list it's obviously important not to have a confirmed opt-in because you won't be able to use your one-time offer if you have a confirmed opt-in including I mean using your confirmed opt-in you can still send people to a product after they've confirmed but it generally doesn't work as well if you if you send people to their email first uh, to confirm and then you send them to a product after that a one time offer it doesn't it doesn't work as well that way this is why i leave my confirmation off and i automatically send people the moment they opt in they get redirected it works better for me but again you can test it and see what works best for you including a one time offer url in your setup that's obviously important make sure you include a link uh, tracking when you use solo ads and whenever you use different opt-in boxes on your blog I did briefly go through that that's obviously very important and your download page I mentioned about having a, a basic page where where your customers can download their product and make sure that the confirmed opt-in is on on your download page but off on your prospects squeeze page so that's it there's a lot of information that I've covered in this video but you can obviously watch it as many times as you wish 
until you get all the information so I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one in this video I'm now going to show you an awesome way how to build your list super fast introducing solo ads solo ads in my opinion are one of the most powerful paid traffic generation methods available for you to build your email list really fast I've been using solo ads for a while now and they've proven to be very effective and very profitable now I'm now going to take you through a few tips when using solo ads but firstly what is a solo ad in case you've never used them before or in case you've never come across them before a solo ad is when you buy an ad from somebody else's email list and they send it out to their list and that person then sends all of the traffic to your free offer or to your squeeze page and it can cost any anywhere between seventeen dollars all the way up to a thousand dollars so there's always going to be a solo ad which will suit your budget and this is the best thing about solo ads they, they can be very cheap and if you've got a bigger budget then and you want to send more traffic and build your list even faster then you can spend even more money and generate thousands of subscribers very fast by buying bigger ads bigger solo ads now the first thing is when you use solo ads the best thing is if you've got a good sales funnel in place you can break even when you buy solo ads and even make money on the front end so do you remember what I said to you in the other videos about the sales funnel process about having a good one time offer this is when it's very important all of those all of that information that I've given you in the mind maps this is now where you see how important it is to have a good one time offer and a good sales funnel so when you use solo ads you should be using a one time offer and the reason is so that you can you can reap some some of your advertisement costs back you can recoup some of your costs back from when you pay for your ad and and often you can even make some money on the front end so this is the great thing about solo ads but obviously you will have to test and you will have to see which solo ads work best for you because everyone has different offers everyone's got a different squeeze page so different solo ads work better for different people and different offers so this is obviously where you have to test and, and track but I will show you how to do that in a different video so that's why solo ads are so powerful because you can break even when you send traffic to your page by and you can even make money on the front end by making a profit when when selling your one-time offers and your upsells from your one-time offers if you remember I explained this in those mind maps so this is it's very important to have a one-time offer when you use a solo ad in my opinion solo ads are the best way to use to build your list really fast and um, there's three there's three things about solo ads they're fast they're simple and they're, they're effective you know they work so solo ads are definitely something that you should consider if you've got an advertising budget and you're looking to build your list obviously it has to be in the internet marketing niche there are some solo ads that you can purchase in other areas and in other niches but it's not something that I get into um, I mainly work in the internet marketing niche and obviously that's what this course is about so solo ads are fast they're simple and they work they're effective so that's the reason why I use them you can set up a campaign as fast as 24 hours you can you can buy an ad um, and sometimes even less if if that particular solo ad provider hasn't got any other solo ads in the pipeline any other customers and then he could just automatically send yours out within a few hours so they work really well and lastly solo ads are an unlimited resource of great traffic now there's going to be a lot of 
solo ads that I'm going to recommend to you I'm going to give you a list under this video way of different solo ads that you can use and also I'm going to put next to the solo ads the cheapest price that they do so you can you can have a glance at all the different solo ads that I that I recommend below this video and you can look at the cheapest ones right through to the most expensive so this will just save you a little bit of time when you're looking to test your campaign now that brings us on to the next point of of testing your campaign this particular solo ad that we've got in front of you marketingyourway.com I've actually used this particular solo ad before and it's worked really well now if, if we scroll down you can actually buy this is what they class as a test a test campaign or um, 50 clicks to actually test your sales funnel so something like this would be ideal if you haven't used solo ads before this would be ideal for you to test to see how it all works for you and to see how your funnel works to, to see if it works because for $21 you can't you can't really um, get a better deal than this 50 unique clicks um, so you will get 50 guaranteed visitors to your squeeze page and to be perfectly honest most people send you more so you may end up getting more but um, I will I will leave that for you to to um, look at because every solo ad that I've ever bought I've always got more clicks than I've actually purchased and this is the general way solo ads work um, and you'll and you will find that if you make a purchase if you buy solo ads yourself so for 50 clicks to your squeeze page if your squeeze page converts at 50 percent then you'll get 25 opt-ins obviously the better your squeeze page converts then the more subscribers you'll get out of the out of the clicks and this is what I said to you when I uh, in the video of, of how to create a high converting squeeze page that's the reason why it's so important to have a squeeze page that converts well okay do you now see the power behind having a squeeze page that converts really well because you'll make more money from your solo ads this is so that these are all the pieces of the jigsaw now coming together you know why we need a sales funnel I've explained so you you can recoup your investment you now know why your squeeze page has to convert well because that's another jigsaw another part of the jigsaw puzzle you see so this is how it all comes together it's very important so this is a great little campaign to start with 50 unique clicks for $21 now I'm not saying come and use this particular solo ad I'm going to give you a list below this video where you can choose but this is one of the cheapest that I've found for $21 for 50 I've actually bought this particular offer and uh, and it worked quite well let's go back up here now solo ads do work really well but you do of course need to test and you need to track your campaigns not every solo ad is going to work is going to work well for you some some solo ads that I use may work well for my offer but not might not work well for you and vice versa so it's something that everyone has to try themselves and personally what I would do is is obviously stick to the cheap solo ads to start with to test some of your offers to see what your offers convert at to see what your squeeze page converts at and also your one time offer and then the more results that you get you can then obviously make tweaks and make improvements and then you can progress from there let's just look at a few other solo ads so this one this is like a good test campaign but he does have plenty more that you can buy so you've got a hundred unique clicks for forty dollars that's a good little deal and there's some testimonials there as well so let's go to the next one this one is Anthony Tilly's solo ads and business building so he's got some good offers he's got a video there and he does 125 clicks for seventy five dollars and then he's got another one here for 250 clicks for 125 dollars so what you have to bear in mind is you have to you have to really focus on your squeeze page and your one-time offer 
this is when it's very important that your squeeze page converts fairly well let's go to the next solo ads this is another one that I've just plucked from my list I've got a big list of solo ads so I will definitely be giving you a list below this video so don't worry you'll have plenty of, of solo ads that you can use so so in this in this course I'm not just going to tell you to go out there and use solo ads and just go and find some I'm actually going to give you a list of solo ads to use so all you then have to do is go to the page just as we are on at the moment buy the ads and then obviously set, set your campaign up and you can go from there and start building your list uh, as quick as 12 hours within 12 hours if not less as I said it depends if they've if they've got a lot of people a lot of customers before you um, it just depends on on that and and if they can send your ad out quickly or not so this one is a hundred unique clicks for thirty eight dollars this is a good one two hundred unique clicks for seventy four what I would say before you start spending too much on any of these solo ads you you want to do a test campaign on, on all of them probably one or two test campaigns so what you what you really want to do is go through each of them and buy the cheapest deal that you can get just so you can gauge what your what your squeeze page converts at for this particular solo ad because remember every list you use they're all going to be slightly different some may take your offer really well other lists might not be so good so this is when it's important to only use the cheapest one so thirty eight dollars and if this performs for you if you get a good opt-in rate and you can and you can maybe recoup your initial investment of thirty eight dollars uh, or at least make some one time offers within within this particular offer um, or within the hundred clicks that they send you then obviously consider using the same one again um, I usually use I usually use the same solo ad twice to get a really good gauge of how it performs if it performs badly the first time I'll generally not use it again if it performs fairly well I'll use it again and then obviously if it performs well the second time I'll then maybe up my advertisement budget for that particular ad and send even more traffic but again this is something that you'll have to look at yourself and, and make decisions yourself on what you want to do but I will be giving you some more tips about solo ads in future videos uh, in the course so um, they'll be they'll be in this course as well but this is pretty much just like an overview of solo ads what they are and and what to look out for and how much you should really be paying um, so I send all of my traffic to my squeeze page as I've mentioned before on extreme cash profits and then I let my sales funnel take over from there now this particular page converts at around 40 odd percent around 45 46 percent so if you can get squeeze page conversions like that or opting conversions like that then you will be on a winner um, they are fairly good conversions anything just below 50% is is really good so that's it for this video we've discussed solo ads and I've just took you through a few solo ad providers and shown just showed you briefly what you look for and what you should be looking to to buy for your first solo ad so you should be only spending a small amount the first time you use a solo ad if it then proves to be profitable and 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 you do well out of this particular solo ad then go back and use it again um, and then if, if it proves to be profitable again then you can then obviously increase your budget and then and then uh, progress from there so that's it for this video I will see you in the next one in this video I'm now going to show you how to set up a brand new solo ad campaign in this nine step process that I'm now going to walk you through this is the exact process that you need to take every single time that you set up a new solo ad campaign so you can watch over my shoulder right now as I take you through the exact steps that you need to take it's very easy very simple to do but before we get into the first step you have to make sure that you have three things and that's your squeeze page set up your free gift and your one-time offer because remember 
without one of those your solo ad campaign isn't going to work if you just have your squeeze page and your free gift but you don't have your one time offer yes you can still use solo ads to build your list however you're not going to have any opportunity to recoup your advertising investment because this is the key to using one time offers as I've said in previous videos it's very important that you've got your squeeze page your free gift and your one time offer okay let's get into it because there's a lot to cover the first thing we need to do is choose a solo ad to buy so what we do is we go to a solo ad provider now this is the one that I used earlier for an example so let's just buy this today for an example I'm not actually going to buy it but this is obviously what you need to do so we're going to buy 50 unique clicks for $21 this is a this is a perfect campaign to start with because if you haven't used many solo ads before it's obviously only $21 and you can test your sales funnel so if your if your squeeze page converts at maybe 30 to 40 percent you, you should get 20 to 30 subscribers so it's a good way of, of finding out and making sure that your sales process and your sales funnel works how it should so what we do is buy the ad and then once you've bought the ad you will get directed to a download page and then what you have to do is email the solo ad uh, solo ad provider owner which in this case is Randy and I've I've messaged him before when I purchased uh, one of his solo ads and then what you do is you have to give him your squeeze page URL so he can check it out and obviously tell him what you're giving away for free because they don't allow you to send any traffic to a page without a free offer okay you need to have a free offer this is why I say some kind of a free gift and it's obviously important as well to have something of value so they have to approve your offer once they approve it they will then tell you to to send them your URL and this leads us on to the next step don't just send them your squeeze page main URL because this is completely pointless we have to track all of our campaigns so this is what I'm now going to show you how to set up it's very simple to do so we've purchased our first solo ad they've approved it sometimes they may require a swipe email if they do require a swipe email all that is is a ready-made email template that that they can send to their list but bear in mind um, this isn't this email that you have to construct if they do require you to send them a swipe email don't worry about it too much because they may tweak it and they may change the title so as long as you can just give them an idea of the sort of information that they're going to be getting from your free gift that's good enough they may tweak some some parts of your email so don't worry about your your swipe email too much okay they may change the title so it, so it suits their list a lot more but have a swipe email ready just in case and I usually leave mine on my desktop in case I need to send it so that's what you need to do and then the next thing next step we need to do is clone your squeeze page so let's go to your so for me this is my main squeeze page URL extreme cash profits but as you as I said a few moments ago it's no good just giving them this URL that's completely pointless we need to track it so what we do I'm gonna go pretty fast through the rest of these steps because I don't want this video to go on too long so what we do is name this say solo ad one and what we do is copy that and then put this to oh so I really need to clone the page first on the state copy to a new draft and remember I am using optimized press so if you're using any other WordPress squeeze page template then you can do this similar sort of thing just basically copy to a new draft so what we need to do is name this 
so it's a different squeeze page that we can advertise as I said you don't want to use the same one and then what we need to do is put it in there like that paste okay so your new page is all done obviously we can't publish it yet because we need to update the code and set up a new tracking ID in our autoresponder so what we need to do now is go over to Aweber this is my extreme cash profits list with all my squeeze page tracking IDs and I've obviously blanked out the left side of the page and hopefully you can respect that these are obviously my my tracking IDs my campaigns what we need to do is find your main squeeze page URL and just click copy then what happens is you just have to set up your new clone page which is very easy just go to save web form go over to settings name this and what I usually do is, is usually name it the domain where I bought the solo ad from so if we go here marketing your way dot com and this way we know exactly where our sales are going to come from also you need to your one time offer link URL needs to be in there don't forget that because otherwise you're not going to make any of your investment back if you haven't got your link in there to your one time offer it's just going to go to a subscribe thank you page a normal thank you page once they've subscribed and that's not what you want you need to send people to your one time offer so you save web form make sure your confirmed opt-in is turned off make sure your confirmed opt-in is turned off you do that by going to your list settings list settings for your main web form and then confirmed opt-in here look and make sure it's turned off as in red. Green is on, red is off. Let's go back to our web, web forms. Go down to the bottom here, you'll see a new one's been created. That's fantastic. We want to publish that. And we get our HTML code. Raw HTML, this is what you need for Optimized Press. But again, if you don't use Optimized Press, don't worry about it. Don't go out and purchase Optimized Press if you don't if you don't want to purchase it or if you have other templates that you can use because as I said it is ninety seven dollars but it's purely optional I only used it I used Optimize Press because I'm not very I'm not very good with with technical stuff so uh, that's why I bought it uh, so we go back to our squeeze page what we do is scroll down go down to opt-in squeeze page options autoresponder and we go to here we delete this delete this go down delete this and what you need to do is add some extra code in here because when you get the code from a rubber and put it in optimized press optimized press automatically takes part of the code out so what you need to do is is go up it's very simple to do is scroll up until you get to this bit just here look and what you need to do you need to do this every time you set up a new a new form this is vital because otherwise it won't track your stats and that's obviously no good and all you do is come down here look in the hidden fields scroll make sure you scroll down all the way down if you don't that's not going to work and then paste that code in there like that and that's done that is it so we come up here and then we go to publish that's as easy as that and that's a brand new cloned squeeze page set up it's obviously not the end of the process there's a couple of more things you need to do we don't advertise the main um, squeeze page URL as I've said but at the same time we 
we don't even advertise the cloned one either because we need to track so now look you've got extreme cash profits sa1 so for you that will be your domain um, and whatever whatever tracking link there that you want to put in just so you know that that's a clone squeeze page so what we do is go over to google url shortener type put your url in there like that and shorten and that is it so what you need to do before we go any further and this is vital that you do this because the solo ad provider won't always the person that you bought the solo ad off won't always um, tell you if it's going to you know I mean obviously he's not going to know which page it's supposed to go to so it's, your, it's in your best interest to check it yourself so check the URL and and it gets redirected to your URL perfectly that's exactly what you're after so make sure you check this it's very important otherwise all of your solo ad traffic may go to the wrong place so what we do then is everything set up and what I usually do as a test is put test in there like that and then just put any any old email um, at gmail.com and then I test it to make sure that it goes through so let me just show you exactly what I mean because this is exactly what I do whenever I set up a new campaign I go to test and then get instant access and then here we go it goes to my one time offer and this is exactly what you need to do obviously this page here is going to be your one time offer this is my one time offer here and this is where you can recoup some of your investment on this particular page so what we do is we get this link here let's copy that make sure we've definitely got it and then we go back to the solo ads we email the person that you just bought where you just bought the solo ad off and you send them your Google URL shortener tracking ID you do not send them any other link do not send them any of your squeeze page URLs whatsoever you only send them tracking links so that you can see exactly how many clicks that you get this is important that you do this otherwise you, you aren't going to know where you are now that's pretty much the end of this video so I've shown you step by step how you set up a brand new campaign this is very important that you do exactly what I've just shown you because this is how you can track every time somebody makes a, a purchase through that particular link through your particular tracking ID because what happens is let's see if I can quickly show you an example you go to subscribers if you go to subscribers here um, let me go to I'll just press search okay let me just scroll down right so on the left here where it says ad tracking that campaign that you just set up whenever you get a new opt-in in this box here you're gonna have marketingyourway.com appear in there so as soon as somebody makes a purchase on your one-time offer you can come into your autoresponder account and see which tracking ID that person came from as soon as you make a sale so you know which campaigns will prove to be more profitable than others you see this is exactly what you need to do if you don't do this you'll be marketing completely blind and you're not going to know where all of your profits come from it's important that you only spend time and and your and your advertisement costs on on campaigns that prove to be profitable obviously makes sense so this is important that you do this and don't just advertise one URL of your squeeze page because if you don't track anything you aren't going to know where you are that's the end of this video it's been a bit longer than I'd hoped but hopefully you can see the value of this video and you can of course watch this as many times you need as you need to until it all sinks in I hope you've enjoyed it 
and I hope you now understand exactly what you need to do whenever you set up a new campaign and how you how you track everything at the same time so you know where all of your profits come from I will see you in the next video take care in this video we're going to discuss solo ad conversions after you've purchased your solo ad and you've received all of the clicks from it then it's important that we look at our stats so that we can determine if that ad was profitable there's a five step process that I usually go through after all of my solo ads are complete the first thing that I usually do is I go to the Google URL shortener account and just double check to make sure that I've received all of the clicks that I was owed so say if I purchased a solo ad and they were going to send me 125 clicks you obviously want to make sure that you've received at least 125 so you you come here check that and then go straight over to your autoresponder account because you need to check your opt-in rate that's the next thing to do so for this particular campaign we'll use this one here this is a recent campaign that's finished so your my opt-in rate was 46 percent next thing you check is how many opt-ins you got 69 next thing you check is EPC so for that particular campaign you can see that I've had 150 unique displays 69 submissions and 46 percent opt-in rate which is fairly good now next we need to check our EPC so I'll get the calculator up so what we need to do is think about how much we pay for the ad now for that particular ad that I just showed you I paid $35 so what you need to do is put in the amount that you spent on the ad and then you have to divide that by how many opt-ins you received now if you remember I had 69 opt-ins didn't I so you divide 35 by 69 and this will give you your EPC which in this case is 50 cents which is very good this is how you work out all your stats and determine if your ad was profitable or not next up you need to find out how many buyers how many products you sold from those 69 subscribers now for my particular campaign I think I sold about six or seven so I actually made my initial investment back plus I may have made an extra couple of bucks but remember five new buyers into my buyers list and then the other 64 subscribers are in my funnel so I could possibly convert a lot of those into buyers and customers as well so now you can see the power of solo ads they are very profitable and very powerful so I now know that this particular campaign for me was very profitable and another thing you have to bear in mind is that as I've mentioned previously is your opt-in rate is very important because this is how you're gonna build your business faster because the higher your conversion rate on in your on your squeeze page then you're obviously gonna generate more subscribers so it's in your best interest to split test and test different headlines and different squeeze pages to try and increase your opt-in rate and get it as high as you possibly can now for me I can't get mine much above 50% but I'm happy with just under 50% it's, it's fairly good so um, I have split tested a few times so um, if you can get around 50% 50, 50 for your squeeze page then that's fantastic so once we determine all of these stats and all of these numbers we can work out if it's worth us going back to the same solo ad provider and buying some more ads and this is exactly how you can scale up your campaigns but I would use I would use the same solo ad perhaps two or three times before you spend a little bit more money on ads or you could just keep going and just keep buying the cheaper ads there's there's no problem doing that 
obviously you'll just need to buy more ads uh, on a more of a regular basis rather than just buy more clicks at once so this is the five step process that I carry out after every campaign so you can now determine yourself if your actual solo ads was profitable or not I hope you've enjoyed the video and now you know exactly what you need to do after every solo ad is complete but remember for a few days after most of your clicks have come from your solo ad you may still get the odd subscriber now and again and that's absolutely normal that's fine but within a few days after most of your clicks have come through it should be fine to start looking at your stats and working out an accurate conversion rate for your one-time offer and for your squeeze page conversions as well that's it for the video I will see you in the next one in this video I'm going to show you how to split test using Google website optimizer as you can see I've logged into my Google website optimizer account and I've already created a test previously Now this is from a few weeks ago but I'm now going to create a new test so that I can show you exactly how to do it and how to set it up so log into your Google website optimizer account with your Gmail email address and then go to create new test click this one here the AB experiment and then you've got three things that you need to do the first thing you need to choose one page that you want to test now in our case it's going to be our squeeze page and for this example I'm going to use my extreme cash profits .com. secondly create alternate versions of your test page this is of course important because you want to be able to split test so what you need to do is go into your WordPress admin panel and copy to a new draft and create two alternate pages if you remember we did this didn't we for the solo ad video when you track your solo ad campaigns we came into our our squeeze page didn't we and we cloned the squeeze page for every new solo ad campaign so it's basically similar to that so you just clone it but then you name it something that's going to be relevant to this particular campaign so it's going to be so for this example I've put ST1 which is split test 1 and split test 2 and we've got our main squeeze page URL as well so we've got those and lastly identify your conversion page your conversion page is going to be your one time offer it's going to be the page where people go to after they've opted in to your squeeze page so you're, that's going to be your one time offer so let's go back here so yes I've got all those create next experiment name so just put um, extreme test or squeeze page something like that squeeze page page test then original so what we need to do is put my original URL in here copy it's very simple the entire procedure variation 1 so we put variation 1 obviously keep it so it's ST1 so it's all so it's all going to make sense and then like that and then what I would do is just click add another page variation obviously you can have as many as you like but the more variations you have the more traffic you will need to split test because obviously the traffic gets equally spread out amongst all of your pages so let's there you go do that and then underneath we put our one time offer page so this is exactly what you need to do <coughs> put that in there and then go to continue and what you need to do then is then validate by by putting your codes onto your website and you will install and validate your JavaScript tags unless you've got a webmaster that does all this for you but 
I take it you you can do it yourself. If you can't, then obviously you'll have to come back to this at a later date. Okay, so what we need to do, very simple. What you need to do is go to your main squeeze page and you need to copy this code here and paste this exactly where it says here just after the opening header tag on your squeeze page code okay so go into your squeeze page and put your code in there and then once you've done that you also need to put a tracking script in your variation pages so you you go to this one you go to your st1 and st2 don't put the same code in you need to make sure it's different because this is this is for your main squeeze page and then your tracking script for these again these are for your variation pages so make sure you don't use the same one for your main squeeze page and your variation pages so you copy the script put it in your variation 1 and variation 2 and then lastly you copy this link here this code here and put it in your conversion page which is going to be your one time offer so it's very simple there's only three things you have to do <clears throat> and that is that's pretty much as far as I can show you once you've done that you go to validate pages and everything um, hopefully will start to function correctly and then as soon as you start to send traffic to those pages Google will automatically track and it will automatically um, it will send traffic equally to all, all of the pages over time so then you will get a a good indication and it will Google will tell you which of your squeeze pages converts the best of course each of these split tests you need to make changes in your headline to see what works best for you okay so make sure you obviously do all that otherwise it's pointless so you've got your split test one split test two and your main squeeze page and your one-time offer those are all the pages you need so once you've done all that validate pages and then you will let me see if I can get some information from my previous campaign that I set up view report I think I've deleted most of this but you should be able to, this is basically what you're going to see it will have some conversions and visitors at the end there and it will give you some some stats and some results here telling you which squeeze page converts the best so uh, it's got some good it will give you plenty of great great information data here as to which page converts the best so that's pretty much it for the conversion for the Google website optimizer video it's very simple to do you can of course watch this video a few times to make sure that you do everything correctly but that's exactly how you split test and it's very important that you split test your squeeze page because you you want to try and get your squeeze page above 40 percent I always say that having a squeeze page that converts over 40 percent is good obviously if it converts 70 80 percent that's absolutely awesome but 40 percent is a good benchmark to go from so try and split test your squeeze pages until they convert at least 40 percent it doesn't mean you got to stop as soon as you hit 40 or 45 percent just keep keep going to see if you can improve them anymore by all means so this is a a this is a vital step of your entire list building campaign you must make sure that you split test so I hope you've enjoyed it and you've and you now know exactly how to to split test your squeeze pages really easily and really quickly I will see you in the next video welcome to the last video in this list building video course in this short video I'm going to take you through the entire list building system and also give you a few additional tips to help you along your way but firstly let me just say that we have covered a lot of information throughout this video course we've covered a lot of 
different techniques, methods, tactics and I've given you a lot of information to take on board so that you can use all these techniques in your own online business to build your email list super fast. Now these next five tips are just going to be extra tips that I want to give you which are going to help you even more to build your email list bigger and faster and also some some vital tips that are going to help you to build your email list a lot more effectively. Now the first tip is going to be on your blog your blog is going to be building your email list 24 7 so by this I mean don't forget to constantly update your blog and and build links leave comments on other blogs generate new content on a regular basis because remember all of your traffic that you generate to your blog is going to be free or at least this is how I've taught you to basically set up your blog all of these traffic methods that you see around your personal blog these are all completely free methods so as long as you're very active on your blog over a period of time you're going to slowly generate more traffic to your blog and then of course you're going to funnel that traffic from your blog into your squeeze page so it's imperative very important that you remain very active on your blog and you constantly update it and you add more content videos so that you can generate more traffic and build your email list even bigger the next tip is you always want to track your blog opt-in boxes or blog opt-in forms okay so whenever you include a sidebar opt-in form on your blog or you include an opt-in box at the bottom of any of your blog posts or you have a link in your navbar anywhere basically on your blog you want to be tracking all of these opt-in boxes because it's very important that you do this so that in a few weeks down the line or a few days or a few months if you've converted any of your prospects to customers it's very important that you know where those prospects have actually come from so in a few months time you can determine where your most profitable customers are coming from if there's a little bit of a trend that starts to happen and you see that a lot of your customers come from your blog then that will obviously make sense for you to put more time in your blog to generate more traffic to your blog and then obviously that's going to generate more customers so it's important that you track all of your opt-in boxes just like I've showed you in the solo ads but you track your opt-in boxes so you can name it um, blog opt-in box this is exactly what I do and it's very effective and it's very good so that you can see where all your sales come from and all your customers next tip is your one-time offers are purely optional from your blog now some people don't like to sell something straight off the bat from their blog and that's perfectly fine and understandable but obviously from solo ads I do recommend that you use one time offers but from your personal blog it's purely optional so it's something that you've got to decide yourself and when you set up your campaigns and your autoresponder that's something you'll have to decide there and then so one time offers are purely optional the next tip is when you use solo ads don't forget that you must track every single click and every single ad that you buy if you don't you're losing a lot of money and you're throwing a lot of money down the drain when you buy these solo ads it's imperative that you track all of the clicks and so you know that whenever you make a sale and generate a brand new customer it's imperative that you know where that customer came from this is very important so always make sure that you track your solo ads and track them exactly how I showed you in one of the other videos when you set up a brand new tracking link and you clone your squeeze page whenever you set up a brand new solo ad campaign it's very important that you do that so make sure you do it the next tip and this is the last tip of the video always split test until you have a good opt-in rate. I did briefly mention this 
in one of the other videos but I will say it again it's very important that you split test your squeeze pages your squeeze pages when everybody that's basically the start of your funnel so if you haven't got a very good opt-in rate for your squeeze page then this is going to affect your overall profits for your entire business so it's vital that your squeeze page has got a good conversion rate if you're using a certain template and you can't get the opt-in rate over say 15 20 percent then change the template there's so many different templates out there that you can use so many different headlines you can include videos you can include certain sidebars so just test as much as you possibly can initially use the tips that I've given you from the Google website optimizer video when you split test and set up only a couple of different squeeze pages and then the squeeze page that that performs the best then obviously use that one the squeeze page that performs the best use that as your main squeeze page and then you can make additional split tests from that new squeeze page so it's very important that you continue to split test until you get to a point where there's nothing you can hardly do to in increase your conversions for your opt-in rate or you're completely happy with your opt-in rate my squeeze page currently converts between 45 and 50 percent now I've stopped testing on my page because I'm more than happy with my conversion rates for that particular page so um, I may test a few other basic templates as well but for now I am fairly happy so if you get to a point and you're fairly happy with your opt-in rate then by all means you uh, you can stop split testing for now and then just continue to build your business uh, and build your email list as long as you're happy with your opt-in rate but obviously it has to be good it has to be at least 40 percent if it's not at least 40 percent then you're you're losing a lot of traffic and a lot of subscribers so make sure it's at least 40 percent if you can get it over 50 maybe into the 60s then that's absolutely fantastic so this is the last video in the video course I hope you've enjoyed this complete video course and I hope now you can go out there and you can build an email list really fast and you know, now know exactly what you have to do to set up your business and your sales funnel in order to generate good income online and, and most of all you can make more profits from your email list because it's all about your sales funnel and it's all about having a system in place so don't forget make sure that you constantly update your blog and you generate lots of traffic to your blog over time of course it will take time but while you're generating traffic to your blog this is when you can use solo ads to bump up your subscribers and your list okay so in time you will generate traffic more traffic to your blog but while you do that you can of course use solo ads and if you have got a um, advertising budget then I would definitely recommend solo ads as I've said in the video because they're super super powerful they're fantastic for building your list as long as you use all the tips that I've given you in my videos you will do absolutely fine and just make sure that you have a squeeze page set up your free gift and you have a product if you have those three tools in place and obviously your autoresponder um, as long as you have those tools then you will do absolutely fine and if you follow all of the tips that I've given you within my course then you will see some very good results very soon once again I hope you've enjoyed the video course and thank you very much for buying the course and I hope to be talking to you again soon take care